Hello everybody. Today is January 3rd. It's a Tuesday, uh, 2023. Happy New Year to everybody. I hope everything was pleasant where you were. Uh, it's a little bit overcast today. It's about 65 degrees and a little breezy. Um, I'm going to look inside the beehive just into the lids and um, just to check the uh, the fondant I have on them. The bees are have been active for the past four or five days. We've had almost record warm temperatures here. Yesterday, I think we missed the high temperature by uh, three degrees. So it was uh, 70 degrees or 69, and the record high was 72. Um, I'm looking at the bees uh, coming in and out. They're, they're active here. It's, it's about one o'clock in the afternoon. So they're flying. And uh, so I just want to look in and check the um, fondant on both hives. I see them bringing in little bits of pollen on their, on their uh, pollen baskets there. Every, I don't know, I would say every five or seven or eight bees coming in um, has a little bit of pollen. It's very light, white, like pollen um, coming into both eyes. I don't know where they're getting it from. I don't, we've had an uh, unusual winter to say the least. So what I'm gonna do is get in, and uh, I'm gonna take the, um, the straps off of both hives and uh, just lift it up and show you guys what I see inside. So hang with me. Okay, I didn't take a sneak peek. All I did was uh, take off the straps off of both hives actually. And I'll show you what I do. Um, Obviously, the bees don't have access to this upper lid here. So looking down in there, the last time I looked in here was December 21st. Um, and I, I drew a circle around my hive life. Um, hive life. My uh, hive alive find it. So you can see the progress that they've made in the, the what is it, two weeks or so? Uh, a little bit over two weeks. So there's no need to change this bag at all. You can see there's no condensation like there was before on top of the fondant. But uh, the bees are, are up there and they're, they're using it. So I don't have to do anything with this hive. I'm not even going to redraw my circle. Um, I'll just leave it like that and maybe January 21st. A month I'll come back and check it and um, I'll write that on my calendar and that way I'll know okay in a month they use this much and I have a couple of more hive hive um, hive alive fondant pack packs that uh, if I need to change one I can I got a little spider friend and the yellow hive as I said before they started the year with more with more stores and um, nah, they haven't used much of any since uh, just a little bit since I, I checked it again the same day which was December 21st 2022 um, I'm gonna stand up here and look inside they don't have their hole as clean so I'm gonna clean out their hole um, to go directly through the sugar board. And that may be an issue too. So what I'll do is I'll clean that out. And I'll get back with you guys. It's really windy. Okay. These bees might have not liked what I did. But I did it anyway. I just enlarged their hole. So they all have more direct access to the uh, fondant. And once the word gets out that there's a bigger hole and there's more good stuff inside, they may get to it and they may not. And that's fine. But there is a sugar board here. And there are also, as I said in the, in the previous, this yellow hive 
started out the season um, in the fall with a lot more honey stores than the Red Hive had. So um, they should have been, you know, fine with their, with their honey stores. And again, there's activity on both hives outside. So I'm putting the covers back on. And I'll just go ahead and put the, um, I got a gopher in here. I can feel it. I'm walking along the, the gopher path or wherever it goes. But anyway, um, I'm going to put the straps back on. It's really windy here. And that way they'll, uh, they'll be set up. I'll let you guys watch that. It's a simple thing. They don't have to be so uh, tight, just enough to hold the lid, keep this from flying. The, the hives themselves are very heavy. Again, my setup is I have bottom board, which is, it has a pest management tray underneath. These are flow. Next to that, uh, it's a screen bottom board with a pest management tray. Then I have the two inch um, slatted rack from uh, Man Lake or somebody, I can't remember who. I think it might be written on the front. Nope. Anyway, so I have a two inch slatter rack. Then I have a deep and a medium box that have been glued together and combined with a single solid frame that's about 16, seven, 16 inches deep by 19 inches wide. Uh, so it's a regular standard width of a Langstroth, but it's 16 continuous inches and the bees build comb all the way down. I don't have a breaker bar in the middle. So when you add it up, and I watched Vino Farms, he added his up, and he does the same thing, as well as the Bug Farmer. They make the bee barns, um, volumes one and two, and uh, it, uh, Vino Farms just came back on after a few months of being away, and he just showed his new bee barn 2.0. Uh, so if you're interested in that, please go check his out. But uh, I've, I've been using these deep, because I like the... Uh, the concept of the Langstroth frames, uh, or not the Langstroth, the Layens frames. I like the deepness. When I saw the brood pattern that the bees were leaving on those extra deep frames, so I said, well, I'll make mine extra deep and use a, a deep box and a medium box because a lot of people in my area, they say, well, you use a deep box for brood and a medium box for stores, and that's how you go into winter. So I said, well, I'll just combine it all into one frame. These frames are strictly for the bees. I don't harvest any honey from these frames. Uh, I put honey supers on to get honey from on top of these. But every frame that's a XL, I call them XL. All of my XL frames are just strictly for the bees, for their brood. Um, they put honey toward the top and that forms like a honey bridge and and the queen very doesn't even usually go above these XL frames I have 10 frame hives so uh, a 10 frame boxes so I have 10 frames of the XL frames in here there uh, when they went into winter both frames on the sides were almost covered with uh, with with honey just a little bit at the bottom was pretty much empty, um, but it wasn't worth removing that from the hive. In the center, there's a spider. In the center, there was a little bit of brood space down at the bottom, and then the rest on the yellow hive, the rest was all honey. So I knew they had plenty of stores so that they would make it through. The red hive itself, it had nah, not quite a medium's worth of honey over their brood because they had uh, lost the queen and had to requeen, so they got they were behind a little from the compared to the yellow hive. So uh, I knew that they would be taking more of the supplements, but I did put on both hives a sugar board with about ten pounds of sugar each. 
So the sugar board's about two inches up here or here. Then I have the insulated cover that I, uh, you see the inside of my box is yellow. This is a deep box that is screwed together with the insulated cover. When you get them from Be Smart, they got these ribs and it doesn't let the box sit all the way down. Well, I use an oscillating saw and I got rid of those ribs, put the box all the way down, and then I covered it with uh, expanding foam. I glued it all together and I screwed it in through the boxes. So my feeder shim extra box top, top whatever, is all, it's an insulated board with a half inch plywood on top hole drilled into the center, filled with expansion foam all the way around the edges. So there's no air that gets into the top. There's no air that passes through the bottom and it's got that plastic dome and you know, so. So you get all of the benefits and I have all this plenty of room under here. I can put a, uh, a bucket feeder if I choose. I can put like in the winter here, the fondant, um, just whatever. And uh, if I even needed be, I could even put more insulation in the top of these boxes for the winter. Our winters are not that bad. I'm here in central Virginia, Chesterfield County, the next county south of Richmond. So, again, my winters are, are and most of the beekeepers in my area, they don't even put these uh, insulated covers, the bee cozies. I figured it, would, it couldn't hurt. Any condensation will be further down, and it, some of it will drip into the the uh, pest management tray, and I just clean that once a month or so. And, um, yeah, so this is my winter setup. Both colonies, this is my third winter with them. And they've, they've I, I knock on wood, I have not lost the colony in the winter at all. Um, anyway... I'm going to put this cover. You just might have heard my recycle man come through. Today is recycling. And then I just... Uh... So basically that's it. Um, these guys are set. Um, I'll check them again um, sometime around January 21st. Uh, we're supposed to have record, uh, not record warmth, but uh, in the 60s all the way until Friday. And then Saturday in the 50s, Sunday in the low 50s. So, uh, but the nights are going to go down to 30s. So uh, I'm not, I don't break the seal. I know I have no need to pull out and look at any frames at all in these hives um, until March time frame. And I'll check out in March. I'll see what, uh, what the temperatures look like. And if I need to get into them in March or April, then I wait till March or April. Uh, and that's when I'll start, you know, I'll have my supers ready to go on. Uh, actually, they're ready now. So uh, I can put the supers on the beginning of March uh, or, or whenever I decide. And that's when I usually take off the, uh, after the last uh, freeze or so, I'll go ahead and take off the sugar boards. But if I have to leave the fondant on, again, my inner lid is connected to that box. So that box stays on there all year. Even when I put my supers on, that box will go on top of my supers. And all I do is close it up. I got a uh, cover to fit in the in the hole, so it just fits in the hole and it closes it. It closes it up, and it's just a regular cover, inner cover, inner lid. And so it insulated, always insulated. And so even on top of the supers, it'll be an insulated lid. So anyway, that's it for the system, the setup. Um, I'm not gonna check the uh, the pest management trait. Well, I'll just look at it real quick. Yeah, I can see where they was getting into. Oh, I think I see a Varroa. Nope. Yep. Nope. Uh, I see where it looks like they're 
concentrated on this side of the hive because I can see where they was uh, the cappings, wax cappings are coming from. Um, might as well look at this one while I'm here. Right down the center. I don't see any Varroa. Okay. So this one also is I would say they're at the second to third frame over the the, the based on the, the wax cappings that I see in the tray. So they haven't moved over to the well from the back of it, the right hand side of the hives yet. Same with that one. But it makes you know, I don't know. Our sun comes up over this house, and in the winter it goes that way. In the summer, it comes up over the house, and it's right behind the camera here, sets. So, but anyway, they're fine, and I'm going to call it a day for these. I'll go inside, and today I'll probably, I'm building, I am building, um, a long hive, horizontal hive, and uh, it's going to be designed as a horizontal hybrid hive. Again, let's look at some activity here. So, it's I know the sun, you can't really see much because of the sun direction. And the hive, the visors are low, but there's activity. But anyway, I'm building a horizontal hybrid hive is what I'm going to call it. XL hybrid hive, horizontal XL hybrid hive. Uh, and I'll get more into that later. Okay, here's something that um, you guys don't usually see or I don't usually show it. So I'm going to show it. I just came inside from checking the hive. Again, today is Tuesday, January 3rd. 2023 you can see up, up here i checked my hives on december 19 2022 the red hive the bees were alive um i didn't put how i checked it but i i have a stethoscope um and or also i could have seen the activity so I, I think i'll add that to my next time i update which will be right now but uh in the red hive the bees were alive they used three inches of the fondant used and then the yellow hive, which is number two, the bees were alive. They only used one inch of the fondant. And I put a hole in the sugar board, but not a big enough hole. So now today, as you saw me, I just uh, increased the size of that hole to give them better access to the fondant. So I'm going to update this, um, this board up here. And then, uh, yeah, and that way I'll have it. And I also have my big giant uh, FedEx calendar I buy every year. And I write things on the calendar as well. And if I ever need to go back, these these over here were last year's uh, notes. So I can even go back and look like this was December. I can go back to August and see all the things that I've written. And I'll keep that up there uh, for a little while. It doesn't bother me and having it there. Uh, it's my junkie shop here it's my my suit um i have just a veil some gloves up there behind my weed eater uh this is a hoover box that has a flow frame in it just a placeholder this is a a flow hybrid system that carries uh four flow frames and i also have four ross round deeps in there and that's a hybrid hybrid um, and my regular, I have a flow frame up here and then all of the rest of my Hoover medium boxes and deep boxes. And, uh, this one is like a nuke, nuke box. That's also for my XL frames. So here again, these two boxes are glued together. You have a medium and a deep glued together with a solid bottom board and a hyphe gate. And I have an inner cover and a lid for that. And I will set that up as a resource nuke coming up this season. Um, 
and the lid is over here. So I have an inner lid and a, and a solid cover and the inner lid is inside. So I'll set that up as a resource high for my XL because I want to get them to build more XL frames, build them out more. I have blank ones here that need to be uh, built out. And I also, I'm going to wire them and put foundation in them. I have some that have acorn black heavy waxed foundation. And as you can see, when I say there's no center bar, the bees will build comb all the way from the top to the bottom. And uh, yeah, so I'll be working on a few of those projects. I have a few more in this bucket. Um, I think there's 15 frames to build in here in this bucket. And some of them will be black foundation. Some of them I may order, uh, um, what is it, better comb. And this is better comb. This gives them a head start. And so I wire it up and do it myself. And the bees will finish it off. And they connect it. And uh, so, yeah, I may do, I may order a box of 10 um, deep better cones but anyway so this is going to be it holds 25 frames my horizontal hybrid hybrid um and i'll get more into that now i just built the box and i just made sure it's the right size and length and if you can look down at the bottom there's a little bit of extra space for the bees to come in and go come and go and it's a heavy one, which, of course, you know, when you build it out of the two by, it's heavy. But uh, I put um, my goal is to get this uh, started. And by the uh, fall. I want to be able to like right after uh, in late August or September, I'll put it on a trailer and I want to take it to my daughter's house in West Virginia, set it up. She's got two and a half acres out there. I want to set it up out there and have this hive be almost self-sufficient, but I'll be able to go up there once a month, take a look at it, and uh, uh, any honey or anything that comes from this hive, they'll get to keep up there. And uh, yeah, and I know one of her neighbors that's about maybe three miles away, two miles away, they have bees. Um, I haven't talked to them yet, but I've seen their sign in their driveway saying that they have bees. And uh, you can see kind of back off, but they keep theirs way back in the woods as well. So anyway, this hive is also um, an XL hive. Uh, and it also has a hive gate on it and a uh, slatted rack inside. And I use this. This may also, if I outgrow my nuke, I'll just use this hive. But these two boxes are glued and pinned together with uh, biscuits inside. So I had to scrape some of the wax off up here and um, it's got the slatted rack in there. But also this is when I said it had um, uh, Ross rounds, deeps, that's this. Oh, it comes apart because the, the bees haven't had a chance to glue it up. But this is a Ross round deep. They give you, oh, they give you the little ends to make so you can put two together vertically instead of having the shallow box that I initially had. That's like that underneath my hybrid. That was a shallow and you, you did the Ross rounds. But this way you can just if you don't have the shallow, you can just put one of these into a regular deep frame box. And, uh, you know, if you just want to experiment with some Ross rounds. You can buy that. I got it through Blythewood Bee Company. Um, a setup just like that for one is about 20 bucks. So if you just want to try one, 20 bucks. Most people sell a Ross round itself for, for about 15, 10 to 15 bucks. So if you sell two, you paid for yourself. And then you have uh, what, six that you can sell for profit, keep for yourself. Test it out and say, hey, I do like this. They do sell and uh, I'll buy more. So anyway, I have four of those that are going to go that are in here in the hybrid. And I have three that I'll either put in here 
in this this my daughter's hive just to make easier uh, extraction for her in West Virginia or I'll put them in my hive in my mediums in my deep box uh, somehow anyway that's it for now I'm rambling but I'm gonna update my board again update my board and uh, uh, probably build about 10 of these frames okay here's just a quick update I updated my uh, board um, on there it says the uh, red hive bees are alive and I put underneath flying that way I can tell okay they were flying I put three and a half inches of fondant used on the number two hive which is the yellow hive the bees are alive also flying I put one inch of fondant used but I also put that I enlarged the hole in the sugar board and of course today's date January 3rd 2023 that's just an update on um updating my board and i so i'm gonna go listen to music and build some frames